So, Panama, tell me a little bit about this podcast and your work. It sounds like you have a lot of things going on. <laughs> yeah, uh, my name is Panama Jackson. I am the host for the Power Don King podcast, which is season three of the Power series uh, from Something Else and Sony Music Entertainment. Uh, and it's a podcast about Don King's rise to the top, how he stayed there, why he stayed there, how we allowed him to stay there. And um, amongst other things, I'm also a, a columnist and writer for the Uh And my bylines can be found in various other places. So I'm a cultural commentator, which is how I even got to be a part of this project here uh, on Don King. Nice. And how did you get started right, being a, com a columnist? Tell me a little bit about that. You know, that's a, a, a very long, fun story. So I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version. I started writing the way that lots of young men start writing, chasing women. I started writing poetry and I was very bad at it. But what I found out was that because people struggle with whether poetry is good or not, everybody told me I was pretty good. But eventually I got really interested in the writing and like putting my words on a page. Just like I, I started learning about myself in the process. And that evolved over time into me starting a blog when blogs became a thing in the early 2000s. And in 2008, I started a blog with two of my friends uh, called VerySmartBrothers.com. And that <laughs> enabled me to land my way into a career as an actual writer, uh, columnist, editorialist. Uh, it's taken me places I never imagined I could go. It put me in a position to be doing this podcast on Don King. Uh, I met Oprah. Uh, Barack Obama came to one of my book club meetings uh, virtually. It was virtual, but he was there. Uh, you know, it landed me on Good Morning America. So I've, I've been able to do many things because of, of writing and starting a space uh, that focuses on, on Black pop culture specifically and the intersections, the intersectionality of, you know, race and culture and, and politics and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. Nice. And how was the podcast? How did, I, how did that come to be? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I'd love to. So this is a fun story. I just, I answered an email. <laughs> so the producer for the podcast for this, for this season, her name is Tiffany Walker, emailed me. She reached out and she mentioned that uh, there was a podcast that she was working on. I don't know if she'd mentioned that it was Don King in the podcast, but she mentioned that there was a narrative podcast that they were working on. They're looking for a host and whether or not I'd be interested in hopping on a call to talk about the possibility. And, you know, I get offered lots of random things on occasion. Some are terrible. Some I regret missing out on. There was a very popular documentary uh, a couple months ago that I couldn't be, I couldn't get in because of COVID and I'm so mad about it. So I'm glad I said yes to this opportunity, the opportunity to speak with Tiffany and Lizzie Jacobs at the company to kind of see if I'd be a good fit in you know, it turns out I was. I guess I knew I knew enough about Don King and his positioning and culture and all of that uh, to, I guess, make it a good fit. And I think it's been it's worked out pretty well. It's a great podcast. I like it. I as a consumer, I enjoy listening to it. And what are some of the biggest challenges about doing the podcast in comparison to doing your writing? Oh, well, wow, that's a great question. Uh, I'm not doing all of the writing for this podcast, so having to interpret others words and delivering them and executing that in a way that conveys the thought and emotions that we're looking for that's been a challenge I've gotten better at it over time but that was that was definitely a challenge at first I still vividly remember like the first recording session and how difficult that was for me uh, so that's one thing but also just trying to <laughs> trying to make sure that you're being true to facts and not embellishing in ways that take away from the story that might like remove the credibility of what the story is that you're telling, like the care and attention that I, as a, as a columnist and opinionist editorialist, right? I get, I kind of get to just go off with my ideas, right? You know, they, they, I get to just fly off the handle. We can't do that here, right? You have to be more careful and intentional with the way that you're presenting a story. For one, you don't want to get sued, but for two, you want to make sure that people don't tune out because you're not being true to the story. And I think, I think Tiffany and Kyra, especially have done a really good job of honing in on, on the story we're trying to tell and ensuring that we're doing it in a thoughtful way. And what episodes are coming up on the podcast? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so this, the main story is seven episodes. Six of them have already released. The final episode, which is largely about Don King's legacy, uh, 
you know, the kind of the final chapters of his of his boxing days and what his legacy means to the community, to boxing at large. That's the final episode of the seven part series. But we also have uh, some bonus episodes that are coming. Uh, one of them is about the numbers game. Don King got his start running numbers, which is an illegal form of the lottery uh, in the 50s, 60s and 70s. Very popular in the black community, especially. Uh, and then there's another bonus episode there. So there are a couple bonus episodes that are going to be coming out after the fact. But the main crux of the the series, the seven part series, six of those episodes are out already. And the last one releases on Monday. And what would you say was the most important thing you learned about Don King while doing this podcast? Yo, that's a great question. So when I came into this podcast, I had one thought about Don King. Don King was basically this crook. Like this narrative had been given to me as a child because Don King was just a part of my life. As long as I've known, you know, as long as I can remember, Don King has always been there. But what I learned about Don King too was that he was operating in a world where the economy of boxing is a completely different world. One of the most fascinating things that we heard from almost every single person involved in boxing was that Don King might have taken people's money, but he made people richer than they ever would have been otherwise, right? And I'm just like, that's so interesting that this is everybody's position. Like, yeah, he, he maybe he did take all their money, but he made them all millionaires too. So it's just interesting that there's, it's a, you have to m- remove yourself from right and wrong and place yourself inside of a world. It's kind of like that the, the famous saying, don't hate the player, hate the game. You know, yeah. it's like, he's literally the embodiment like you know how we say on social media like if if don't if don't hit the player hit the game was a person it's like don king <laughs> yes exactly yeah so once this all airs what are you working on next you know me personally i'm going to go back to writing my columns and and working on uh specifically black cultural items and things like that i have a couple things in the hopper that i don't want to jinx in case i fall they fall apart but you know, Black Music Month is coming up next. So my work at the Grio is going to, there's going to be a lot of Black Music Month content and things that highlight stories about content creators and musicians and art forms that uh, I enjoy and I think deserve all the flowers. Uh, I don't know what's next for the Power Series. I actually, I'm the host for this and I don't know what's coming up for that. But considering how well done all of these series and seasons have been, I am looking, I am as much looking forward to the next season as anybody who's just listening, as somebody who participated, I'm very curious as to where this season, where these series can go and what else something else is doing. Because you know what? I've listened to all those podcasts and I've become a fan of the productions that have been put out by this. Like, like I get it. You know what I mean? Like, I understand what they're trying to accomplish and job, job well done. Nice. And one thing I like asking people I interview is tell me a fun fact about yourself. A fun fact about myself. Well, I kind of alluded to it, but I'll give you the, the, the fun one that I put in my bio. Uh, Oprah Winfrey called me once, but I didn't answer the phone because the caller ID said unknown caller. But because I don't answer unknown callers because that could be a bill collector. I don't know. I'm not trying to pay no bills. I don't feel like paying at the moment. I don't like telling people. I don't like rejecting people, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she left me a minute and a half long voicemail that I didn't believe was actually Oprah. Like, I listened to it. I'm like, no way impossible i sent this thing out to we we play this voicemail before thanksgiving dinner in my family at this point it's like you pray and let's listen to the voicemail y'all this is when oprah called and eventually i actually got a chance to go uh i was invited out to la and i got a chance to meet oprah and have a conversation with her and learn about her favorite drinks and stuff like that so i got a i have a i am the owner of a voicemail from oprah winfrey because she read a piece that i wrote and she loved it so I know for a fact that Oprah Winfrey read something I wrote so much that she loved it, that she found my phone number. Oprah's the Fed. She found my phone number and called me and changed my life in that day. In that, day. that is incredible. And like the moment every journalist wants is to have Oprah like their work. Right. Or just to have, you know, it's one of those things as a journalist, right, as a writer, you know, I guess social media changes that because you can find out in real time if people hate you because everybody will tell you immediately. But when you write something and you find out like the people who are, who you're actually trying to reach to let them know that you care about what it is that they're doing and the art that they're creating or a part or are responsible for, when they get it and they feel the need to let you know that they appreciate what you did, like as a writer, as a content creator, as somebody who, whose focus is cultural curation, 
like that kind of moment is priceless for me because it lets me know that I'm doing something right. You know, I've, the decisions that I've made to, to good or bad to put me in this position were the right ones because they allowed me, they allowed me to see that I'm doing exactly what I should be doing. And since we're also a TV site, what are you watching these days? Oh, so that's a great question. I just finished watching uh, The Ultimatum on Netflix. That train wreck of a relationship show, amazing. I'm also watching We Crashed. I'm watching, you know, the uh, I got to see where that goes. I listened to that podcast, so I'm fascinated to see where that goes. Um, Winning Time, I think that's on HBO, uh, you know, watching that, the show about the Lakers, the rise and fall, I guess the rise of the Lakers dynasty. Um, this Is Us used to be my show, but I fell off. So I guess Same. I probably got to catch up. I got to catch up. It just, it didn't hit me the way that it used to. And I kind of moved on in my soul. But, uh, and Abbott Elementary is my favorite show on TV. Uh, Quinta Brunson show, Abbott Elementary. Uh, love it. So those are, that's four shows right there that I'm, I'm actively watching. Uh, don't miss an episode because I love them that much. And what would you say was your guilty pleasure TV show or movie? Oh, Sweet Home Alabama is probably my guilty pleasure movie. Love that movie, man. I watch that every single time it comes on. Love Reese Witherspoon. That movie is so bad. It's amazing. Like, I love it with my whole heart. Uh, TV show, probably the entire power cinematic universe, all the shows um, from power seasons like one through six force the new show with tommy so everything power related that courtney kemp puts together or has had a hand in guilty pleasure it's ridiculous i love it i don't want to ask you about that art back there did you do that yourself absolutely not i don't have an artistic bone in my body my wife is from ghana and okay. in 2019 we went to we went to ghana to uh to visit her family and just to take a vacation. And this is all art that uh, we bought off the street in Ghana from a couple of different artists and vendors. And we came home and had it framed and, you know, so we could hang it. But this is, and this is, uh, this is six pieces right here. We have art all through the house that we bought while we were out there. Um, but yeah, this is just, this is street art from Accra, Ghana. It's gorgeous. I love it. It is. It's amazing. I was so um you have to forgive the fact that it's crooked back here <laughs> i didn't straighten it up but it was uh i could have i could have spent thousands of dollars just buying up art um because i was so impressed and fascinated by the use of color i'm a person that loves color like i i like color everywhere like it drives people crazy like the more colors the better for me like i will walk out the house in 87 colors plus heliotrope you know what i mean and i just i love people who use color effectively in art and that's what that's what all these pieces stood out to me um so i love them great 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 works of art i actually still follow some of the people on instagram and we actually you know we 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 uh, correspond through dm on instagram uh just because i'm such a big fan of their work uh it's amazing and where can we follow you on social media so we can continue to follow your career yeah thank you so much uh i'm at panama jackson on instagram and twitter uh, Facebook, Panama Jackson, I'm, I'm there. And mostly if you just Google Panama Jackson, all of my work pops up at the Grio, Very Smart Brothers, places I've written. I've written in, I can't, I don't even remember how many outlets I've written for at this point, but I've, I've um, my work is all over the place if you just Google Panama Jackson, but Panama Jackson, at Panama Jackson on every social media uh, outlet. All right, I'll send you a follow. Thank you for taking the time today. I appreciate you. And I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.